So what is the solution? Well, the solution is the following. As many people know, I, you know, I've been doing this for now 23 years. Part of my expertise and my specialty is looking at natural anti-inflammatories all the way from the farm to the bench top of doing the scientific research to the bedside of using it clinically. We have used special forms of natural anti-inflammatories, particularly the ones I'm going to speak to you today, more than any other clinic in the United States and more than most people and more patients uh, that we have followed in the last 23 years. So this is my expertise in the area of how to actually lower inflammation, but how to use the right potency, purity, safety, and efficacy, which is our mantra here at House of San Giovanni Integrative Medicine Lifestyle Center. How do we give you the right anti-inflammatories that are going to help lower your inflammation systemically, focally, and systemically without having side effects? So I want to mention to you what we call Bosmeric SR. It's an all-natural anti-inflammatory, it's fast acting, long lasting, safe, and effective. We created it to be the following. It's one of a kind, unique delivery system. And I'll explain that, how that works in a minute. It's fast acting, meaning it works within 20 minutes, like a fast tab. Like most people go get their fast Tylenol or a fast Advil or, or, or fast to leave now. We want something. If we had a headache, if we have back pain, we want that immediate response. We don't want to wait an hour and a half or so for something to absorb. And a sustained release to last over eight hours versus most products, which will have maybe one or two or three hours max. And we use only the patented clinical, patented studied ingredients at the clinical doses. So let's start off with the first ingredient, turmeric and curcumin. And what is the difference? Here's the challenge. Most people, and again, even if you've heard me speak about this before in many lectures, and still to this day, that's why I'm spending so much time on this, the average person doesn't know the difference between turmeric and curcumin. Why? It's not that, the, that the, they're, they're, they're uneducated. It's that the marketplace is trying to interchange these in marketing to make them seem like they're the same, but they're not. Turmeric is the root. So turmeric is actually the rhizome, right? It, it, it grows on the ground. And then that's where we get the curcumin from this. The curcumin is now two to 5% of turmeric. So if we grow, and when we grow, say 100 pounds of turmeric root, when they process it through specific scientific methods, some of them are proprietary. That's why we now have a C3 complex, for example, which was patented. When they remove the curcumin out of that 100 pounds, we will only get then three pounds of curcumin. Okay, so it's not the same. So a lot of times now with the online retailers, since the data shows like, which is the Superman and the Wonder Woman molecules of turmeric, which is the curcuminoids, that they will like to use this so people can sell you a generic turmeric powder, which I'll tell you why there's a problem with that. And I'll say turmeric curcumin or curcumin powder but that's not necessarily true because nobody's regulating it. So most products out there that even use the word curcumin are actually just giving you generic raw curcumin powder, okay? Now, when we look at the curcuminoids, which are the three components that are the most, we call it scientifically the strongest, the safest, the ones that have the most amount of research, it is three components. So that's why they call it C3. There's three components of those curcuminoids that have been patented to be at a specific ratio. My book will cover that. The product has it at those potencies at those specific ratios. Now, curcumin has been studied. There's 21,000 publications now on the general uh, ingredient, right? And in fact, when I gave my lecture just uh, uh, like three years ago, and I, I think I showed this slide, it was 16,000, right? So it just shows you how much research is being done, right? No reports of deaths, right? And we can use it as a food. But when you use it as a food, which you should do, you should be eating and incorporating organic turmeric in your diet. But be careful when you just go buy turmeric powder, and I'll explain why in a minute. And be careful that, that you just say, well, I, can't I just you know, get turmeric powder and use it? You can. But the problem is you're not going to get usually the highest potency of the curcuminoids that you need to actually drive the inflammation down when you have a chronic serious problem. Eating it is great because we want to add those other curcuminoids. And in fact, in Bosmeric, what we do is we've actually calculated 
how much just generic turmeric powder, all the other components, there's over a hundred different molecules aside of the curcuminoids that are in turmeric that also have been shown to be beneficial. How, what is the minimum amount that is needed in the clinical studies in humans, by the way, to lower inflammation? And we also incorporate that. So we're actually using like, like specific phytochemicals at the clinical dose, but we're also looking at the whole plant right? This is how we kind of formulate things. And everybody says, well, why not just take turmeric? Because I want to be a whole food plant-based diet person. So why not just eat the whole foods? Because we're now turning food into medicine. If you have a headache, you want that headache to go away right now. If you have back pain, you have Crohn's disease, you have rheumatoid arthritis, you want to start reversing that inflammation, reversing the disease and preventing progression. Most of us haven't been eating turmeric all our life. And so if we were incorporating this for decades, our overall inflammatory burden would be less, but now it is much more. So we do have to then make these more potent. Now, curcumin lowers over 100 biological mechanisms of inflammation. I won't go through them here. It's in my book. It's in my previous lectures. But think of when you look at an NSAID, an NSAID is just blocking one pathway, COX-1 or COX-2, for example, right? And here, we're blocking over 97, okay? Now, curcumin and all natural products, by the way, do that, does this is that as it lowers the inflammation over a hundred different mechanisms. So it's, that's why when people take um, ibuprofen, uh, naproxen, celecoxib, acetaminophen, over time they actually build tolerance. So aside of it not working and actually causing your joints to get worse and all the things I mentioned before, is that your body builds tolerance because it's just the same pathway, same pathway, one street, one street. Or here, we're talking about 100 different streets, back alley roads, freeways, you know, side roads, frontage roads. Like we're looking at all the different pathways of lowering inflammation. But it's multi-targeted and monotargeted. So in my previous lectures and in my book, for those people that have cancer or really bad chronic diseases or on autoimmune drugs or immunosuppressive agents or even chemotherapy agents, you can see here over the, on the side here is that the curcumin has been studied to show the similar effects to all these other kinds of drugs like Avastin, Plaxitaxel, you know, Gleevec, Herceptin, Remicade, Enbrel, Eterbux, and even you know, uh, Celebrex, for example. But it's also multi-targeted, meaning it's working on cytokines, which you've all heard from the COVID the last couple of years, you know, this inflammatory cytokine cascade, all these different interleukins and enzymes and growth factors and receptors. It's not just a suppressor. And in fact, it upregulates 202 mRNA transcripts and it downregulates 505. What that means is that it's turning on certain genes that are anti-cancer, that are anti-diabetes, that are anti-heart disease, that are anti-dementia, and it's turning off the ones that actually progress disease. So foods, which is why we want to go into a whole food plant-based diet, and natural products have this ability. Nature's been kind to us. When we kind of do it pharmaceutically, all we know is to how to turn it off. And sometimes that's fantastic. We need to turn it off. Someone's you know, flaring, giving something, calm the flare down, but it's not healing the body or assisting in its biological processes of optimum health. So the gold standard we use again is C3 complex. It's the most studied form in hospitals and universities. And now we have 165 clinical studies. Last year was 165. So just letting you know, we keep on adding more and more. And then we're not just talking about, you know, in a rat or in a dog. Now we're talking about, you know, phase two, phase three, phase four studies, right? And we're now looking at synergy between these things like curcumin C3 complex and our bosmeric, what we're looking at in studies and the use of certain prescription drugs. So can we now look at adding these kind of ingredients to a chemotherapy agent and lowering the side effects and making the chemotherapy or immunotherapy or whatever therapy more beneficial and less detrimental. And we can. Before we used to say, don't take any of these things. And what we do in our practice, just letting you know, when I see a patient and I'm, we still like to see patients and we can do consultations, health coaching and uh, everything online now, we like to look at each drug and we like to look at what's the interaction and some things you shouldn't be taking with certain drugs and certain things we're going to teach you that, hey, how do you reduce the side effect and get you a better outcome of your therapy is by doing some combinations. And this is where my specialty is. And most you know, oncologists and most practitioners will say, don't take any natural therapies when you're taking these drugs. And most kind of people on the holistic side of natural world will say, hey, take everything that's not going to harm you. And that's not true. You have to understand how the pharmacology works, how the phys physiology works, how the immunology works, how the microbiome works, and then we can provide excellent, excellent outcomes. 
The C3 complex has no heavy metals, no solvents. It's not synthetic. There's no nanoparticles. It's not irradiated. All the ingredients in Boston turmeric is non-irradiated. Everything since 9-11 that comes from outside the United States is irradiated before it comes into the country. What that means is it goes through the machine that we sterilize like surgical equipment, and it actually knocks down the biological activity of the plant. Why? Because we're afraid of bioterrorism and other contaminants that can cause you know, illnesses. The problem is that then we're losing the physical activity of the plant, just like putting spinach in a microwave, right? So what you have to understand is that we go through all the means and, and processes. That's why it's a little bit more expensive because our products are not irradiated. We want to ensure that potency of the plant, but then we have to go through layers and layers and layers of auditing and testing to make sure that it doesn't have solvents, heavy metals. It doesn't have any of these other aspects. And it's the only curcumin that it actually has grass status. If you don't know what that is, Google that up and you'll, you'll understand what that is. Most companies will kind of lead in and say, hey, we, we have grass status, but they actually don't. There's very few companies that actually have grass status in their products. Now, again, 106, 185 clinical studies. Why that's important? Because when we look at all the other brand name competitors, right? So when people go say, hey, I go to a doc there's a doctor's brand or reps come to doctor's office or practitioner's offices and they're, they're selling something. Hey, I see this in the store and it has uh, some data. These are the, some of the examples here. You can see here, I'm on the screen here. I won't read them out loud, but these are the, the other brands will say, hey, we have studies, right? But they're limited. They're actually in test tubes, most of them. And they're like little pilot studies, mainly white papers. White papers, like an advertorial. It's scientific. It's nice. We learn from that, but it's still an advertorial. It's not a clinical study. It's not a clinical trial. It's not actually showing anything else in terms of just this is maybe how it works or how it works maybe in a, in a, in a test tube or a rat. Now, the biggest challenge that we've seen in the last 10 years is that everybody wants to find a better, faster, quicker, right? So they want to claim 29, 45, 65, 128, 277 times more absorption of curcumin right? But what they're finding out, and when you analyze those studies, they're actually measuring what they call metabolites. When curcumin goes into the gut, it actually converts to eight metabolites. And what they're measuring at gluconeride has been shown to be not inflammatory or having physiological any effects, right? The body sometimes makes a lot of byproduct, and some of them are important, and some of them are just waste products. And they're measuring this waste product, and then claiming that it has more absorption. So what that allows them to do is give you less product, have a higher margin on that, for the patient thinking that they're getting something that's going to be 200 times better, but in fact, higher absorption does not equal higher efficacy, right? And that's why we like to stick to the science, stick to what actually clinically works. And when most people try these things, it doesn't mean that they're terrible or dangerous per se. It just means that they don't get the benefit that they're actually investing their money to paying out of pocket for. Now, when you say, what about all these other products? I mean, these are all the products that if you were to go in the major online retailer right now, these are all the things that if you said, ah, let me type in curcumin, these are all the products that have come up plus more. None of them have any safety or clinical data. Now, why is that a problem? This is the problem. Because in addition to this growth marketing is this growing 157 million by you know, a, few, a few more years, ground turmeric Right, and you probably saw last year. I saw about about two months ago, and then two reports were last year. Ground turmeric is a large source of lead exposure in the United States. Why? Because when they get generic turmeric powder, which is most, by the way, right? Uh, there's only a couple of large, large suppliers in China and in India. Is that the rhizome? Remember, it's it's a root product. The 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 little the grinder that that spins the, and and kind of grinds the skin off the of the turmeric itself that has the lead because it's just big machinery that they're doing industrial processing and that contaminates. So most people are like, oh, I go buy something for nineteen ninety five for twenty nine ninety five for thirty bucks, and some products are even eight dollars. Oh, it says turmeric or cumin powder and all those things have a high likely, if not when they've tested them, to have um, heavy metals. Now, again, most of them are not certified pesticide free. What does that mean? As a rhizome in the ground, root crops are heavily sprayed. Ginger and turmeric are heavily, heavily sprayed. That's why when you go to the store and you go buy, say, an organic turmeric root, it could be like $21 per pound. It's expensive. Now, you think, if you think of it's $21 per pound and only curcumin is 3% of that pound, and then we got to extract that out and then put it in capsules and give you, you know, 500 milligrams and so many capsules per day. How can a product be $4? How can the product be $18? It can't. It's not real. Okay. 43% um, 
This is a big problem that we have. 43%, and this is a study that was published, of the largest supplier to the United States was found to be selling synthetic curcumin. So why can the, so why is everybody selling curcumin, say, online or on Instagram or on social media? Because it's super cheap now. But how is it super cheap? I just told you how expensive it is to get organic turmeric root and then try to extract it out. It's because it's in, now it can be synthetically made in the laboratory. Every week, I get an email from China and India from suppliers because they know, Dr. Pai, you're the curcumin. You're the guy who's been doing this the most. Hey, buy our synthetic molecule because it's not regulated and it's still a curcuminoid. It's just one of these threes, but it's not even at the right ratio. The problem with the synthetics is it has solvents and has other chemicals and also can cause severe reactions. Like people can take it and get dermatitis and get diarrhea and actually exacerbate their symptoms. But again, this is a supplement industry. It's not regulated. So this is the problem. Most people buy cheap supplements. And that's why a lot of doctors on this show, on this panel of uh, Real Truth About Health, they're kind of anti-supplement. I understand where they're coming from because like, look, it's all over the place and nobody's educating what to look for. But when we do have options that are studied and patented, we should be educating our patient on, hey, you should be eating plant-based diet. But when you still have a headache or back pain, don't go for an NSAID, go for a Bosmeric. Now, what, what, what happened is it was about three years ago, we wanted to look at of these suppliers. So aside of the, the synthetic curcumin, we're looking at what about taking the top five suppliers? So, the, so a university said, hey, let's take the top five suppliers of 95% curcuminoids, right? Because that's what everybody's looking for on a label. And it sounds the same, like 95% curcuminoids, but they're not telling you about how much or what. This is 95%. So Almost all products now, if they're trying to be a little bit smart or fancy marketing, they'll say 95% curcuminoids. So they took those top five manufacturers. These are like, so there's five big manufacturers, which then makes thousands of different products, right? Because that's how it works in supply chain, right? There's going to be a, a, a manufacturer that makes a base product. They sell the raw product. And there's hundreds and hundreds of factories and facilities that will then make their own brand name or private label your brand name. And when they did the study, in the, in the animal model, and they're looking at, you know, what is the anti-inflammatory effects of it? Because they all say 95% curcuminoids, not all curcuminoids available were equal. In fact, the only one that showed to be clinically effective was the C3 complex that is found in bosmeric. And be careful of the newer forms. There's a the newer forms, like a lot of people are now getting into turmeric oils and, and now even... Uh, worse is nanoparticles. And the nanoparticles, you know, even in the pharmaceutical trials have been shown to be quite dangerous. And that's why the trials have been very limited because in the animal studies has caused damage. In fact, all the animals died in the study. So you got to be careful when people are trying to use words like nano, which first of all, most supplement companies can't even make a nanoparticle and the turmeric oils, which a lot of people think of essential oils. And yes, that's part of the turmeric has that turmeric oil, but actually since I think it was 2010 or 2012, the data was showing that turmeric oils actually can be more irritating and cause some pro-inflammatory issues. Thank you.